Welcome everyone. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 7th of October. Thanks for being here. Topics on my list, action items, the change log, and the big one is really Hacktoberfest. Any other topics we need to be sure we put on the list? Uh, yes, a short topic from my side is a brief discussion on the GSOC blog that is pending from the plugin health scoring system. Okay, good. All That's right. Awesome. Any other topics? Okay, so I'm going to put that one top of the list then, Diraj, because that was discussed in advocacy and outreach earlier today as well, or about 12 hours ago. Okay, so action items. I've still got the action item to archive the docs mailing list that will need to wait until November because of the second item, which is for the next three weeks of office hours, I'll be out of the office. So the, the uh, let's see, the 13th, the 20th and the 27th, the 27th, I will just have arrived back in country and I will be too, too weary to be able to see straight in order to do office hours. <laughs> So next three weeks, no office hours, I'll send the notice. I've deleted office hours from the calendar so that the, the Jenkins calendar is correct. And we'll see you in November. Exactly. All right, so Diraj, your question on the GSOC blog post. So shall we look at that? Yes. Okay. Okay, so here's the blog post. Yes. And do you want to look at it in, in context as a deployment? Uh, like yes, this? Okay. Yes. Oh, you silly thing. Show environments view deployment. Oh, that's not helpful. Are you ready for us to review it? First question to you, Diraj. I assume you are. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. But the question is, we still need to add the links to the slide and the recording, right? That's remaining. Correct. Because I watched the recording, as you said, outreach. I watched it last night. And I saw that you had discussions on that. And this is something you want to publish by the end of this week or early next week? early next week so what what uh, kevin and i did earlier today was updated the publication date to be october 10. Okay. so it'll be published the plan is to publish this and the other blog posts on the 10th of october okay awesome now what we did recommend is we would one oh and i've got to make a note this image has mm -hmm. the wrong aspect ratio for use as a an open graph image. Open graph images need to have a very specific aspect ratio for most success. And this one is too, too wide and not tall enough. So mm -hmm. I've got the action item to give you to post a, a pointer to that and I'll I'll include it. Hang on, we can do that right away. Actually, I had that action item from Doc's Office Hours Europe, and I didn't get it done. Let me find my comments, and I'll put them there. Okay, and the one where here there it was. Okay, so. So for your benefit, Diraj, I'm going to put these comments in so that you know, oh, this is why Mark wants to have the um, have the aspect ratio changed on that image. Sure. All right, so let me put a note here. And the image is this one. 
Now, I don't know how to comment on an image. Okay, so I'm just going to put it as a comment in the text. Just a moment. Where we say... Okay, so... Uh, the image needs different dimensions. And this is where we learned, we learned by sort of hard experience. When images are reduced, okay, when images, your problem, I don't remember if it was below an image um, or are, have the wrong aspect ratio. So the wrong height ratio of height to width, uh, they are displayed incorrectly. So it says, hey, the, don't we want to be sure that we are greater than 200 pixels in each dimension and the preferred dimension is 1200 by 630. And if I remember right, this one is much wider than the ratio between 1200 and 630. Is that why Jenkins looks taller and thinner than normal too? Uh, that I don't know. So, I, I'm, yeah, that is interesting. He is taller there, isn't he? So one one technique I use, Diraj, to get images that are are the right dimensions, is I go to the Jenkins social media covers slide deck, and you could go here as well. So let's see. So open graph image needs to have its size corrected. See the social media slide deck. So in the social media slide deck, what's typically done is we'll take Let's see, what have we got for, do we have 2022 something already? There's one, good. Okay, oops, no, so here they are. No, none of those, okay. So season, summer, GSOC, we could grab, you can create your own slide, et cetera. But what I'll typically do is do a file download. So choose the slide, get it to be the way I look and then do a download of PNG. And that PNG then has the correct dimensions. So that, for instance, is now a correct dimensioned picture. Hmm. So you download it from this slide. Yeah, so file, download, mm -hmm. PNG image, right? So you create okay. a slide in Google, Google Slides and then mm -hmm. download a PNG of that slide and that's the image. Wow, that's a very nice trick. I'll do that, sure. Okay, great. So did yeah, you have other- a silly tangential question. Yes. Um, Angelique's female Jenkins, are we ever going to use that for anything or was that just a good joke? Uh, no, it's actually on the artwork page. But we never use it. Uh, you, you, let's see, well, I've, I've not seen it. That's a good point. Yeah, so let's, that's a good one we ought to consider. I don't know, I think we have used it. Okay, let's let's do a search. How do I do that now? Google image search. Uh, image search. Point. Images, here we go. Okay, and now what we need to do is drag, no, not that one, this one. We drag this image, because I'm pretty sure we've used it in quite an, oh, that didn't help. Drag an image here or upload the file. Okay, paste the this. Because I'm pretty sure we have used it in, okay, so here are image searches. First oh. one is there, I think. Yeah, oh, well, but that one is, yeah, okay. So we used it in Hacktoberfest 2021. Where, when it was contributed. And you're right, we certainly should use it elsewhere. Just a thought. So, mm -hmm. 
so where can we use it like when do we decide how do we decide i mean i i think we can put it well so for instance it would be a great one to contribute to put again on gsoc on the on the hacktoberfest 2022 list because we've had a number of of we've actually had a member of duchess france be one of the contributors so kayla altpeter is a member of duchess france and she's contributed to jenkins core so if we look at jenkins core kayla's kayla's pull request kayla oh dear now that may not help me how would i find that she did a she did a very nice fix and now where is it Maybe it's already merged. Nope. I apologize. I'm not finding it. Alt. There it is. Okay. Oh, right. So what she did was did a fix to table layout so that instead of the old old style table it's got the new style and oh, here's her work and kayla's a, a member of wait a sec based in minneapolis i must be wrong i i'll have to do some more looking okay back to your question diraj where else do we use it i'm open to other suggestions absolutely We should periodically put it on the main Jenkins IO page. Oh, that would be cool. Just yeah. rotate them out. Rotate know? through, right. Good right. idea. Be nice if we had more than one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, tangent done. Right. Okay, so back to back to your GSOC post. Diraj, did you get all your questions answered or are there other questions? Yes, one, one small note. So I'll be adding the link to the slides and the recording in the end or, or somewhere, right? Right. Uh, what is this? So you've already added that? No, you added this. This is, a, this is for phase one. Right. This is midterm status. Oh. And so in phase right. two, you'll just do the same thing, add that video hmm. in the phase two section. Hmm. And in the end, there'll be a section like check out these slides. Here's the link. Right. And I, I also wanted to add one more thing near that link. Uh, the Google Slides link is that I wanted to, to thank Jake because he helped me very, very much in preparation of the of the presentation so i wanted to make sure that i give the credits so can i do that yes absolutely yeah it's your your blog post to write you are welcome to do that absolutely so you've you you can work on that uh, it will be merged i i'm at the point where it will be merged no matter what on monday because john mark felt mm. like hey it's already good enough so you've got until monday to make corrections mm. It would be good if you could be the one who presses the button that marks it ready for review so that others know, oh, Diraj thinks he's done and ready to publish. Hmm. Okay. So I'll complete all this pending task today and I'll press that button. Yes. So all right. this was all for this topic. Okay. Well, and congratulations on completing. That's wonderful. We're thrilled. <laughs> Thank you so much. And is the content right? Because I've kept it very brief. And is this what you're expecting in this kind of I, blog? This this worked great for me. I thought this was this coupled particularly with your presentation. Uh, and oh, hey, hey, I got to show you. Um, so you may remember that Plugin Health previously had only two probes. Now it has five. Wow. Yes. The UI looks better. It also, better again. Yep. So, and and there are plans for how to evolve at the next step. So, thank you for your thank you for your work. 
thank you so much it's just uh, the mentors who helped me reach here so big thanks to them now i guess let's see if this page is not linked from your from your blog post you probably ought to link to it because i think it's a point of pride that hey it's deployed mm -hmm. and it's already started working so hmm. that's a very good point because it's like the result yes One exactly so i'll add this in the blog for sure good okay anything else on on plugin health scoring and your blog post um no uh, i think this is it and i'll work on the pending items by myself great thanks a lot All right. So then next topic was the 2.361.2 change log and upgrade guide. It's released. And we, we detected a mistake in the to the 2.361.1 upgrade guide or change log. Uh, there was an entry in the upgrade guide that had no corresponding change log entry. And that, that's that's upside down. Usually, if something's big enough to be in the upgrade guide because we need paragraphs of text, it absolutely should be in the upgrade in the change log. So that's fixed. So is this related to that comment someone made on Doc's Twitter channel where they said that hey, I upgraded to LTS and it had no some it was missing some entry in the LTS change log? That is correct, yes. So what had happened oh. was there was a, uh, the minimum remoting version has been increased. And they were running an, a very old remoting version and were locked out. Their agents couldn't connect. Well, the answer is you shouldn't run really old remoting versions. Running a current remoting version is much better. Oh, so when they upgraded, is that when it happened? It is. That's correct. Hmm. Okay. Sure. So next topic then for me is the big one, and I'd propose we give it at least five or ten minutes. Hacktoberfest. First, thanks very much, Meg, for your work with uh, the rest of us here in office hours for the work on Hacktoberfest because those good first issues already were being chosen and worked and resolved uh, beginning October 1, Saturday. So we've had right. great progress thanks to good first issues. So here you see a number of them that have been closed in the last few days. So PowerShell, Python app, um, pipeline page, Groovy hook scripts, uh, plug-in page that was out of date, uh, agent glossary entries, all those things are thanks to having been identified, listed as good first issues, they've been resolved and merged, and several of these things actually have relatively sophisticated things hiding behind them. This one, for instance, had some had some interesting things going on that, oh, oh no, I take it back, that was an easy one. There was there was one that was especially complicated and it was, oh, wow, where did that come from? Here's, here's a good one on the open with work pending. If we look in the good first issues that are pending, what you'll see is, for instance, someone took on updating the Kubernetes install guide. Whoa. And, and yeah, you talk about there's a big deal. I mean, that is an amazingly big deal. So, in fact, I need to mark this one as Hacktoberfest accepted. We're not done reviewing it yet, so it's not ready to merge, but it's absolutely Hacktoberfest worthy. Yeah, not a good first issue. Wow. No, but... no, and 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 significant work, and of course, it needs good verification to be sure. Hey, does this accurately reflect what we need it to? But right. it's very, but very good. Work. I'm seeing that too, and it's. I guess I'm getting old. Um, we're starting to see over Dynatrace too, the junior people coming out of school, no Kubernetes. 
Mm -hmm. Right. I'm still kind of, I kind of know Kubernetes a little bit, but these people are coming out with massive Kubernetes knowledge and they're looking for stuff to do with Kubernetes, mm -hmm. which also makes me think um, that's something else though for that. I don't know that it's the first issue, but the information that we've got about nodes and agents, mm -hmm. as I recall, the last time we looked at it, I mean, there's a little bit that you can do this with Kubernetes, but there's not a lot of details and sophistication about it. I don't know if that's something else, if that's a Hacktoberfest project, or I just thought of that. I haven't looked at it. Yeah, good, good question. And I don't, I don't, I don't fundamentally have an answer for it. But uh, we could, I, I will try to get to the last couple of weeks got crazy. I will try to go and look at some more stuff. We need right. more good first issues, right? We do. And, and that's, that was the, I, I was, I truly was fully expecting that our work on trying to identify good first issues was going to be largely wasted because people would say, oh no, that's not what I want to do. And instead I was completely wrong. It was very good. It was very well worth the time invested and the things that were discovered. I, I, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it here, but there was a particular one around a tutorial revision that had all sorts of surprises in it. Ultimately, it didn't end up being a very large change, but actually I've got to show it to you because there was a change in a tutorial where we got two new Jenkins logos, Turkish Jenkins and nerd Jenkins. Wow. Oh, right. So at, let's see, is it this one? Build? No, no, it was this one, address reported issues with the hello world tutorial. Okay, and so what happened here was this took two pull requests to get it resolved and the set of changes was ultimately relatively small but crucial to the behavior of the of the tutorial oh. so let me show you what the tutorial looks like it's so this is the top tutorial guided tour and when i went through this one it says okay download the jar run it and then in this next page we had failed to tell them this first step you must install the docker pipeline plugin and and if they fail to do that then the tutorial fails right and and so that that part and then it gets even better by the scripted examples had this comment in them requires the docker pipeline plugin but the scripted examples are by default hidden so we said, hey, let's copy this same comment in hopes that if they skipped the first step right. and hit a failure, they would see this comment and say, oh, oh, maybe I'm missing something. And that's why it's failing. Right. Nice. Yeah. So so and again, it was it was what you'd think was, oh, that's such a simple thing. No, no, to get it right, it was two iterations and multiple people looking at it and realizing, oh, oh, here's this flaw and this problem that we need to fix. And of course, one of the contributors included this video from Darren. Ah. So, so wow. again, so I, I, <laughs> I, exactly. It's like, oh yeah, you know what? I don't mm. have to go to additional resources, but if I want to, here's a video that talks about how to do it. Nice. So yeah, and and special thanks to Hacktoberfest. It's done a great job of helping that. Right. So much for a hello world tutorial. Right, right, exactly. Well, <laughs> gee, hello world should be pretty easy, except it's <laughs> not as easy as all that. And and in this case, it's doing something really interesting. It's saying, hey, what if you want to run a specific oh, and by the way, we upgraded all of the tool versions here to current modern versions so that we don't look like we're running ancient stuff. So okay. every one of these versions is now the, the recent release and it looks very, it, it looks much more believable now. Right. Nice. So, uh, so really Hacktoberfest has, has already shown positive things for for the project. Thanks very much, Meg, for your work on, on Good First Issues. Um, a long time ago, 
the plugin stock or the developer's guide or something did not have the same rendering as the user guide. I I remember you couldn't, I think you couldn't XREF into a subsection. And I think we had a PR to make that work the same. Did that PR ever get done or could that be a hot? It, it didn't get done. It was identified as Hacktoberfest and someone has actually said, I want to work on it. Oh, yay. Now, I was very skeptical of it, and I'm I'm still a little skeptical of it, but the person who's offered to work on it is reasonably skilled and therefore, I think, has a good chance of it actually succeed, succeeding. Yeah. That was, let's see, where did I put it? It was... I don't remember where it even is because I think we flagged it Hacktoberfest, but not... A uh, good first issue, right? And ah, oh, this one use same navigation for dev docs as for user handbook. Yeah, okay. and oh yes, right. And this is one of our one of our Google Summer of Code organization admins. Chris Stern was the release lead for Jenkins 2.361.1 and 2.361.2. So Chris is deeply <laughs> experienced and said, hey, yeah, I'm interested in working on this. So I gave him a brief outline. Hey, here's what you need to consider. And here's, here's what the good thing looks like. And here's what the bad thing looks like. And his answer was, oh, good. He'll start work on it. Cool. So yeah, the, the and the the problem the, to remind the problem is that it looks like this, right? So here's the user handbook with nice expanding, contracting, and highlighting of which section I'm on. Uh, it just looks good and it feels good. It helps the reader as they navigate; they understand where they are and what's next. Uh, when you do the same thing with the developer handbook, this top level page is not a bad thing. But then if I click how-to guides, I get dropped into something that's, well, where am I? Uh, you know, I don't know quite where I am. And and it it actually goes gets worse from there. So, oh, mate, what if what if I do improve a plugin? Okay, I still don't. Okay, this one highlights where I am, but the other one didn't. All sorts of inconsistencies like that. Okay. So it's not for someone who's like it's not like a good first issue right that's what you were saying yeah, yeah this is definitely not a good first issue this this mm. thing that chris stern has picked up is is well worthy of chris's skills because i expect it will be challenging to understand how the site is generated with the awestruck generator what the ruby code does that does the generation what's different between the user handbook and the developer documentation pages and what will it take? It probably be, will be a relatively small change in terms of number of lines, but a large change in terms of understanding how to unify the two things. Right. Yes, exactly. And, and again, very, very grateful that Chris is interested in it and willing to work on it. Now, I apologize. I, oh, go ahead, Duraj. Yes, thanks. So I have a question for Meg. So how do you dis, like how do you decide the, or how do you find the good first issues so that I can use your strategy and try to find some by my <laughs> own as well? Do you want me to tell you all my, I just started opening stuff up and reading. And, oh. and it's amazing how many pages, if you open them up and read them, you say, ooh. Ouch. Um, I especially looked for sort of older basic topics because the stuff that's been done lately, I think has been in general higher quality than some of the old stuff. So I went back and looked for things that didn't match. Um, or, or I started looking, I discovered, like I forget a couple of them, there's like the same topic in four different places. And I don't, you know, and I don't know that they're all matching, et cetera. It's sort of like one of those whoever was writing just decided to say it again. Um, another one I've wondered about 
is doing that with some of the plugin guides too. Is just open them up. I mean, I I remember when I was looking at them. Every once in a while, I'd look at something and go and kind of go, "Ooh, ouch!" Then I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't so terrible that you just had to stop everything. But well, and, and certainly there are. Well, I guess one one valid point is, or one one area of that is, there are still approximately nine hundred plugins that need docs converted from wiki to github right but, but we intentionally did not put that as a hacktoberfest topic because the usual problem there is not the conversion it's getting a maintainer to merge the change and release it right exactly so it takes time so it ends up not being a hacktoberfest contribution Right. We, do, we don't want someone to spend the energy to create it. Well, and and the, the poster child for me is this one, right? I'll show it again just because it's, it's a painful one. So if I look at docs, table, oh, plug-in migration progress, here we go. And if we look for Ansible, so uh -huh. Ansible is has 20,000 installations so it's the ansible plugin is a popular plugin 20,000 means it's somewhere between 5 and 10% of the installed base has it installed and the pull request has been open since September of 2021 huh so it's it's now 15 months old who right? owns the ansible plugin no. uh, uh, uh Let's see who is the uh, uh, Emilio Escobar, or and then it's I don't remember who the others are. So it's just not getting any. J C Ciro was the original author, and it's it's just not gotten any any attention. Yeah, that's kind of bad. And and the the hint there is okay. It's also not been released very recently. The last release mm -hmm. was in twenty twenty. Yes. Is that so what's the current release of Ansible? I mean, is it up to date with the current Ansible releases? And and that there's there's not been a lot of bug reports on it. So so that's a, a good one to check, but I can show you I think that in terms of bug reports, there haven't been a bunch. If we look at open issues against the Ansible plugin, it's only got 46 issues and in terms of recent issues, there it's not a high volume of recent issues. Yeah, but still makes, I mean, do we have here sort of an orphan that nobody knows they're living alone in an abandoned building with no adults? I, certainly it is, it shows every, every attribute of being an orphan plugin. Uh -huh. Right, and and it just needs someone to adopt it, but in order to get someone to adopt it, we need we need people who are willing to adopt. Right. But that's why we have the tutorial on how to improve a plugin. Can we can we make a Hacktoberfest to um, review and adopt Ansible? <laughs> no, that probably doesn't work. Yeah, see, ad adopt a plugin feels much bigger than a Hacktoberfest topic. True. The, the idea with the, with the improve a plugin tutorial was get people started towards adoption so that they're comfortable and confident. And hopefully by the time they've completed four pull requests for Hacktoberfest, they realize, oh, this isn't that bad. I could adopt this plugin. Right. But so for right, what is that? Four, four PRs to get a t-shirt or something like that? Exactly. The threshold this year is four yes. PRs to get a t-shirt or plant so what a we tree. need is a category of if you do, I mean, actually, I must be sort of a wiseacre here, but adopt a plugin and do it well. And that gets you, that counts as four PRs. Oh, see, adopt a plugin and do it well will we'll require more than four PRs ultimately. Right. And And the tutorial shows us that, right? The tutorial has many more than four steps and 
as preparation for DevOps world, we took a set of 25 plugins and ran the steps through about 15 or 20 of them. And absolutely every one of them had at least three or four items on this checklist that needed to be done. So you, you look at this list and you say, wow, really? Three or four pretty much of every pl- every one of the 20 plus plugins we, we chose. Yeah. Okay, so adopt a plugin, do it right, get three t-shirts. I don't know. <laughs> right, exactly. But just, I mean, adopting a plugin is on a different, I mean, maybe we could make, do we, we have a lot of orphan plugins out there, right? We have, we have over a hundred that are up for adoption. Could we have a special Hacktoberfest category of adopt a, a plugin to encourage that if somebody comes in for Hacktoberfest? Because it looks like you're getting some sophisticated people. And to just, you know, maybe make a list of some that, I mean, those that have got, you know, 10 installations, the last one done five years ago, who cares? We could put out a list of like 10 or 15 high priority plugins that need to be adopted. Yeah, and, and certainly, see, here's the list, right? You, you look at this list and plugins, plugins with 170,000 installations like Javadoc or Lockable Ooh. Resources are great candidates to be adopted, right? Now, there right. Are a little bit, there's a little bit of the fear part where you say, wow, 170,000 installations, if that's four users per installation, I'm almost at a million users. Right. I'm at least over, I'm well over half a million users for this plugin. I got to be sure that I don't don't hurt it, hurt somebody with it. Right. But you're you're talking about humble nerds. There's the other group will say, wow, almost a million users. That's going to make a great posting on social media. Look what I did. Right. And <laughs> and and that's a valid point, right? If I adopt Yes. If I adopt the Apache HTTP components plugin, I am serving 290,000 controllers. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we could almost, if you, if we get a few of them, we could almost make a special t-shirt. It could be a special subset of Hacktoberfest. Mm-hmm. But, um, 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 Diraj, you were asking, are, how good are you with Kubernetes? Hmm. So, yes, I'm beginner, but I do have knowledge of it. I completed the tutorial on OpenShift by Red Hat, so I do have knowledge on it. Okay, my and I'm not sure because I don't, so I'm just talking off, but off the top of my head, see what you think of this. My mm-hmm. feeling is like we have the section on how you install Kubernetes, and I and somebody you've got somebody who's working on general stuff. But my eye is that a lot of the basic Jenkins topics that are covered, there's a Kubernetes aspect, like when you're talking about nodes and agents, you know, where, you know, what's what's the ramification of two nodes in the same namespace versus in different namespaces and, you know, and just little things like that. And I'm thinking that could make a lot of I don't know if they're good first issues or not, but there's certainly Hacktoberfest, you know, to go in and update this. Um, a lot of, I don't know about Mark God proxy stuff and plugins. Like if I install, well, if I install a Kubernetes or a plugin on a Kubernetes environment, do I, that has five namespaces? Do I have to install that on on each namespace, or is it good enough to put it on one if it's all one Jenkins instance? Uh, nothing, nothing special actually. Oddly right. enough, outbound traffic and things generally are okay. Yeah. Um, can I? Can I? For performance reasons, are there some of these that it would make sense to? You know, there's just a, there's a lot of places where just a sentence that says nothing changes on Kubernetes, put it wherever you want to and do whatever you want to with it, which is still knowledge because I'm looking at something in there. I'm like, well, gee, I wonder if this is different for Kubernetes. But it would take somebody with more knowledge than me to go through and come up with really valid things there. Yeah, and, and see that I think is a good topic to put into 
but really that's where what we i think what we need for that kind of knowledge transfer is we need kubernetes administrators who run jenkins to tell us so people like damien Deportal, like hervé lemur like stefan merle all three of them run jenkins on kubernetes uh for the jenkins project Uh uh-huh sam gleska who i'm pretty sure runs jenkins on kubernetes and others like him who are expert administrators and know the the barriers, the strengths and the weaknesses, you know, hey, here's here are the network routing problems that occur. But those things I think really do require experts. And there's my understanding, which may be wrong, is that there's another class. There's people that are running Jenk, not running Jenkins on Kubernetes, but are using Kubernetes for agents. Oh, interesting. So they're running Jenkins outside of a Kubernetes cluster, but they're yeah, using... Yeah, I'm not positive. I, I think uh-huh. I got that from one of our external training groups a couple huh. of years ago, and it may have ceased to be true also. Interesting. But that they were, you know, that they were fine with their controller and everything, but the, all the dynamism was with their agents and nodes. And that they were, and I, you know, you'd have to check with somebody with more knowledge, but... It might have been something that was just happening in the early stages of adopting Kubernetes and that we've moved on. But that that was, you know, that they had it already running. They just needed more agents and nodes and they needed more flexibility in how many agents and nodes and they were just throwing up a Kubernetes cluster and throwing them up there. But hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, so so that that for me is a running topic. And mm-hmm. I'm still in the crawling phase. I'm I, I've got a so I, I I'm right now. I think our first step is get this pull request, these pull requests that are related to Kubernetes, reviewed and merged, so that and there are plenty of things hiding in these two of oh that needs work and that needs work, etc. And what I was talking about with Jiraj was asking was just reading through some of the docs on general topics and think about, are there Kubernetes questions related to this that are not answered? Ah, uh, I see what you're and, saying. And, that, and then that is an issue of, you know, discuss agents and nodes on Kubernetes in the agents and nodes section, or one of them. I think there's a, multiple sections on agents and nodes. I think I made another issue of that. I'm I'm just trying to think of place places to look and read and some you know some of what you read you're going to go yeah that reads pretty well <laughs> and some of it you may read and say gee I wonder about this and I wonder about that we don't have to answer it that just becomes an issue of is there something here um, since we seem to be seeing a lot of a lot of people coming in who knew know Kubernetes better than they know anything else mm-hmm. good okay. So basically going through the guides and trying to see whether it's uh, Kubernetes friendly or not. Is that what you're suggesting? Or yeah. and try to see, oh, okay. And try to see that uh, there are helpful documentation around Kubernetes terms or not. Did I get that right? Well there's yeah. so there's certainly things that a, a reader could could identify if you've got some kubernetes experience say hey hmm. what does this make sense or oh no that's that's flawed etc so absolutely good things to read um also might be some maintenance there's probably and i don't i don't know for sure what's in the kubernetes it might be kubernetes admin but if I'm running Jenkins on Kubernetes, what information can I get out of Cube Control that I that's relevant to me? That's not. In other words, all most of our docs here were written by people who were Jenkins people who were learning to get it up on Kubernetes. And I'm thinking right. about somebody who's really the Kubernetes sort of end of things and really want to use you know use Kubernetes to the greatest effect. I mean, are there performance advantages to splitting stuff between namespaces or separate clusters and all of this sort of stuff. Um, right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now I get your point. 
good. But yeah, right. Garage basically, and I went looking. I, I went looking at a lot of like the older stuff, the basic stuff, because that's where I think there's more problems. It got written once and it's written. Nobody's looked at it for a while unless something changed in that area. Um, I see. So when you look at the old documentation, uh, you mentioned that you find them lagging behind. So by lagging behind you, uh, what are the criteria that you mean? Do you mean phrasing changes? Or what, what Le less of that, that other than just the information was a little shallow. You know, mm. it's you do this and this happens and life is good. And, you know, a lot of places where there's nothing about what could go wrong. How do you chase it? Mm. Um, what does this affect? All that sort of gnarly stuff. Mm. Okay. So, Makes sense. Sure. This it's, just, it's it's really fun because you go reading. You don't have to fix anything. You just look and say, "Gee, that looks suspicious." Issue. Exactly. Yeah. And you might find and, there used to be mm -hmm. more bad writing. It seems to me that a lot of just the pure bad writing and formatting issues, of most of them. But there there were a couple. I found a couple. You know, a few bullet lists where. Half of the items were knit capped and half weren't, and some were bold and some weren't, and few inconsistencies. Like, then those are to me, my idea of a good first issue is something that's brainless so I can get used to the tools. And, you know, so. Yes, exactly. So you keep that in mind and try yeah. to go through the older tutorial documentation and read through them. And you could look at some of the, and the, like some of the plugins that have been around for a long time, but pretty stable that do have owners, do have known owners. Um, I don't know. Mark, we didn't get you out of here early. Right. Well, but I think, I think we're set. <laughs> Thanks very much for your answers, Meg. Any other topics we need to cover before I can end for the day? Nope, and you don't need a cup of warm milk to get to sleep, right? <laughs> I, I am ready for bed. A very short topic. Sorry, Mark. Go ahead, so Diraj. I, I, I get DM on Gator you know, from contributors who want to contribute uh, in that improve a plugin tutorial, right? So okay. they ask me what plugin should they choose? And my intention before answering that question is I should be suggesting them the plugins which maintainers are ready to, you know, review the PRs. So so do we need a section for this in the improved plugin tutorial because or is there any section in that already I need to go through that because when you're reading through the tutorial, they would need to pick a plugin to improve. Correct. So, and there are some guidelines that they need to follow before deciding a plugin or else there it would be like an Ansible plugin. So what I did was I provided a uh, list of plugins that have already already have people who are really willing to review pull requests um, as part of Google Summer or as part of Hacktoberfest. I'm trying to find the list now because I copied and pasted the list into a Gitter post, and you are welcome yes. to just reuse it. Where yes, did I put I, it? What I about? <laughs> What about the step documentation that we were working on with um, um, She Codes Africa? Is there anything there that we've got somebody who will review that's doable that hasn't been done yet? There really, there really isn't. The problem there is it's a it's usually a beyond beyond a good first issue level of skill required uh -huh. because we have you have to find the place in the code to to add the content, then you need to learn enough to, to actually add the content. And between those two things, that's, that's a larger barrier than, yeah. than most people can overcome. Where yeah. is that list? I know I generated a list. I got huh. it. I'll paste it. Oh, you got it. Good. Okay, great. Yes. So Yes, that was the question. So I'll refer that list. And we do not need this in 
the tutorial, right? Because it might seem weird. No, well, I'm hesitant to put it in the in the tutorial because it's so variable. I don't hmm. quite know how to do it to make it make it such a thing. But here, let's yeah. So I assume you're going to paste the full list. Yes, I'll switch my account. Hit the one I have permission. Oh, just just paste it as a proposal. I'll happily. Happily, you don't have to change accounts. Just po paste it as whoever you are, and uh, there we go. Okay, good. That was that was exactly it. Great. Uh, are these clickable or sure? They will be soon. There, now they're clickable. Awesome. Thank you. And and these are just these are actually plugins that, for your info, these are DevOps World uh, contributing to open source um, candidate plugins that we candidate plugins up for adoption. So what we did is John Mark Mason, Bruno Barachton, and I adopted about 25 plugins and this is that uh, most of that list of adopted plugins that we are we intend to drop and not have them adopted anymore once we've finished this exercise so we need someone else to adopt them but you're so, foster parents you're not adopting exactly we are fostering <laughs> i'm not sure the word fostering would go real well in our international community but yes Foster parenting. That's very good. So for what instance, is, if, is there a, a more proper term internet? I mean, there, there are always people who care for children whose parents can't care for them temporarily. Babysitters? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Meg is alluding to, she's using an analogy for a longer term case. So Let's, for example, say that a child, a child has both parents die in, a in, a, in an accident, and mm -hmm. then someone needs to take care of them. In, in the U.S., at least, there are times when those children will be offered as they'll be adopted by another family. Uh, and sometimes in the transition period, before they are adopted by another family, they're placed with a foster parent family that's known to be temporary non-permanent adoption. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so don't, don't worry about it. All <laughs> right, so good. we've we've got a list and that list is usable and hmm. pull requests are already, actually I'll show you one that was just processed today. Mm -hmm. So here's this one. And we see a brand new contributor submitted a pull request. I reviewed it and it's been merged. Thanks to Pam. Uh -huh. That's awesome. All right. And thanks for the work on that parameterized trigger plugin. Thanks for that. Because my PRs were open for too long and I did not work on the comments. So thank you for your help there. And and that's that's one of the sort of the joys and the surprises, right? Is sometimes there have been long-standing pull requests that just the mere act of clearing out the pull requests is a real positive mm. for the plugin. Yes, exactly. All right, thanks everybody. Recording thanks, will everybody. be available Have later. Have a wonderful tour, and we'll talk to you in November. Talk to you in November. Yes. Enjoy. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.